the other issue came up this week that was absolutely interesting. I mean, out of the blue, uh, a memo was leaked from the police service uh, indicating that a directive had gone round asking the police uh, on the streets to stop motor checks. And that would mean your driver's license will not be inspected anymore, your uh, road wedding certificate will not be inspected, whether you have uh, your car is insured or not will not be inspected. But, but the police will still, I mean, have the barriers there uh, just for the checking weapons and ammunition, etc. In your vehicle. I mean, when I first said it, I must admit, I was very happy. I mean, very happy, very happy for an obvious reason. I mean, when you're driving, you see a police post, even when you have all the documents, I mean, something happens in your system. They're going to stop you and ask for something. I mean, we've all experienced it. And I thought, well, you know, this is the best news ever. But then on second thought, as they, they, you know, people started talking about it, interrogating a bit more, I mean, for the greater good, is it really good to, you know, get the police to stop motor checks? I don't know. I mean, you've had your say throughout the week. It's interesting to hear the views of my panel on this very important subject. I thought I would start with you. Yes. What, when, you heard, when you first heard this, what was your initial reaction to it? Well, the politician, as I am, I was thinking politics. Really? Where's the politics? <laughs> the environment is very rife. People are interested in votes. You know, drivers feel that they are harassed unduly by the police people. Uh, they believe that uh, they take money from them. And sometimes, needlessly, they go to the motor courts where they pay fines and the rest of it. So, to get a constituency to align with um, the ruling government so they vote for them, such an edit could come out. But it has serious implications for this country. Because at the end of the day, how can somebody say that in the name of votes, I mean, we shouldn't do what is right and needful? I don't, for one, um, approve the situation in which you can see that all the police checks are intended for money collection. I, I don't approve it. It's, not, it's wrong. But there are basic things that we do for security purposes that we should not wish away in the name of, I mean, um, uh, we're going to vote, and therefore these people now should have a feeling that we are not going to harass them and they should vote for us. So that was my initial, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, reaction, looking at things from uh, the political window. But let me find out. Who, I mean, I mean, wrote this memo? Where is it coming from? Is it, is it the IGP who slept on his bed and woke up and said, look, um, all the rules that we've known um, over the years, I want to relax them um, uh, for the sake of this uh, um, uh, moment. Or it came from the Minister of um, Interior. It, it, it came from the police. In fact, there's a senior. It's assigned by the senior police officer. I'll, I'll look for the name and 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 and, and bring that to you. Yeah, and and I I've not seen the memo, but I'm beginning to question what is the justification for it. Can somebody justify? The, we spoke to the uh, spokesperson for the police service, Sifasatha, and he says they 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 found that it's it's not it's not priority. I mean, looking for the lines is not priority. The priority going to elections is ammunition, etc. In fact, we can listen to. The man in his own in his own words. We are suspending those ones, and we realize that the concern now is about traffic congestion in our cities and towns. We want to concentrate more attention on managing the traffic situation and create more uh, congenial uh, 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 traveling atmosphere for our, for travelers than uh, this issue. We we also realize that the attention or the focus is too much on checking documentation and things, which. It's not so much the matter of concern for Ghanaians for now. So uh, occasionally, as per our, our operational strategies, we revise and review, and that's what we are doing. Some amount of inconvenience is also being caused in that direction. But this is not to say that the, that aspect of police operation has been abolished. It has only been suspended for the time being. Lacks bonafides, with all respect to him. You understand? Because this is what they've been doing. When did they come to the realization that there'll be traffic congestion if you keep asking people to produce documents and all that? You just move in from your house and it's about 9 p.m. You can find a long queue and all that you see is a touch light which is being waved at you. Mm -hmm. You see? And somebody so Sometimes it creates traffic. Oh, and duly, all the time, all the time, not sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you begin to wonder, there are sense of um, um, uh, us. Now look, there's a long queue. And there, there's a, can you open your booth for me to find out whether I have ammunition? No. 
is a pleasure of a man by um, a, a small barrier and with a touch like just asking you to go or not to go look at your face and the rest of it that kind of thing so please with all respect it's never been the case that they are concerned about traffic and the traffic will be there whether or not i mean i mean they they, they say that they should they should abandon it but what is very important for me to ask is that are you doing this to make drivers happy because we are in an election year? It seems to me that's where what it is. Because all but, 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 but the document was leaked. And yeah. in fact, to be fair to the IGP, uh, when he spoke to Kudo Yang Singh, I think the, following the weeks following his appointment, and he mentioned it in that interview. This is way back. He mentioned that it's, he feels that the, the police's uh, focus, they were you know, focusing on checking your driver's license and neglecting the other bits. You know, and and he felt something needs to be done about that. So but they go together. To refer to them. They go so, together. The first thing that I mean, a policeman will find you, a policeman with a serious security sign is to connect the driver with the car. So driving license. Let me see your driving license is is, is basic for it to know whether this is you know a stolen car the rest of it. So it's a whole arrangement of security checks. Can I have your driving license? I mean, but the point I'm making, the timeline doesn't suggest it's <coughs> politically motivated. This is an IGP who simply no, when, when, when he, uses when he assumed this. office to now, how many months are we talking about? Maybe he had to put in place the right measures. So what that kind then of right ones, measures are there? Directive it, it's just a directive. If, if it's a policy which is well thought through and is very good for, for, for the setup, it's a memo. A memo away and people will, will comply. Why this auspicious moment? But he had an intention way b when he was, you know, months ago when he was appointed. And so at least it is his personal belief as an IGP that this is what, the way we need to go. He just decided to implement it two months on election. Well, the, the timing does not show bona fides. That's, that's, that's my, my view of the matter. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you begin to uh, wonder, this nice principle, is it only two months that should have significance? Why, why, why not all the time? So when you say you have a good idea, and that good idea works within a certain frame of um, uh, uh, time, a certain time definition, <coughs> people will begin to wonder, you are just doing this for the simple reason that you want to make drivers happy, that the, the incessant, excuse me to say in quotes, harassment of drivers by um, I mean, the police has abated because the drivers will say, will vote against you people because you harass us too much. I think this is what they are trying to achieve. Okay. And we can't run away from it. So, is that what it is? Well, I don't know. I don't know when the IGP became a politician. Because this directive is coming from the IGP, I'm told. Yeah. I mean, that's what you have told. On the, on, the, on, the, on the leaked document, it's yes. not the IGP's name on it. It's a missing, uh, I mean, it's from, it's from the police service. Police officer. I mean, you could say that there's no way you can issue this without the IGP. So, I'm saying that it's coming from the police service. Yes. Officer. And he's saying that they are doing so because of the election, so they can, they can get votes. The, 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 and I said that it's the police service. Made up of politicians, or is the IGP who is the institutional head of politicians? You, you, you see how my colleague lawyer <laughs> is being clever. The, the IGP has a boss, it's called the Minister of Defense. No, Do you know that? I know the, the Minister of Interior. Interior. I'm sorry, Interior. Interior. I mean, the Minister of Interior is an integral part of cabinet. But let are me, you aware? Let me, I know, but let me go. So, on. why are you is saying this? Let, 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 let me make There's no point. evidence, you don't have any evidence yeah. to link what you're saying. There's no linkage. You see, uh, Evans, you will notice that there's a pattern in our country. When we are inching towards Christmas, there's a lot of traffic, vehicular traffic. There's a lot of robberies. Pickpockets are operating at a high speed. A high speed. You understand all those things? So if a new IGP is, comes in and he evaluates their operational processes and procedures, and he says that, look, and my uh, Mr. Tachian here, Honorable Tachian, admits and concedes that most of the processes that the police use are a type of harassment to the motoring public. He himself has considered here. So if somebody is saying that, look... He was caught in the drivers. No, he himself <laughs> said that. He said that they harass. No. The police harass people. No. He said it here. No, no. I'm, I'm just trying to capture how the drivers feel but, about this matter. But you have well, a representation. But no, you said that... I'm so law-abiding. Were... Listen, I'm so law-abiding that even as a member of parliament, if you tell me to open my booth, I cannot open it. Yeah. I don't feel harassed about it. And nobody's going to say that, oh... The passengers, <coughs> I mean, are many. And therefore, if you don't make me happy, I have to take you to the motor I mean, uh, court. 
you know all these issues. Yeah. Have you got the motor call before? I've done. So, so why, why are you not agree with me? So it's I'm not saying I'm not agreeing so, with so you. Let, let, let what let I was saying in essence point, is that right? you concede that most of the things that our drivers are taking through are actually very bad uh, uh, processes. You understand me? Because mm -hmm. you see, you will notice that the intent of the police officer who approached the driver is not necessarily to to see to it that the the laws I, are I must, obeyed. I must say, I mean, it, it's you understand me? Sometimes it's, it's very obvious. Yes, it's obvious. So you see, on about that, you must you have an explanation. He knows. He has said that. Yes, so you yeah. see, so if an IGP is saying that, or the service is saying that, look, you are focusing so much attention and energy in this area because he cannot come and tell the public that because this is your motivating factor, and therefore rich channel your energy and tools. You understand me? We are talking about resources. I'm just told that even visibility has has um, camera police visibility there. Yeah. It is because they need more men, many more men to do many more. Uh, but what operations. about what about the fear I've heard from the public this week that when this directive will only lead to lawlessness on the streets? In fact, the Road Safety Commission has said has said the same this week that it's only going to in increase the carnage on our roads because it's they're going to have. People with without licenses driving because they now are confident that nobody will stop them. It's, it's, not, it's not true because you see, they are not saying they won't do those things. They are saying that they say traffic management will still. No, they are not checking your licenses. Yeah, but they say traffic management. Yeah, they will still see, they will still manage traffic, but they don't check your license. Don't call, ask stop and say, show me your license. Boss, you see, in, a, in their operational procedures, the police cannot stop every driver who is driving to produce a license. True. So you see, they do so random. But the fear that you will be stopped is a deterrent. But say, yes, but I'm saying that they do so on suspicion. Occasionally, sometimes when, randomly. Yes, because sometimes you may have driven in a manner that gives them the suspicion True. that you may not have been a, uh, like a driver. You or you are not a driver because normally he doesn't expect. You may have done a maneuver which he thinks that a good driver wouldn't have done that. So he thinks that let me see your license. <laughs> and sometimes they will see, of course, you and see the license. And ask you to see them, whatever. I don't want to talk about the rest. But you see, what I'm trying to say is that I don't like the situation where we try to impute motive, negative motive to every decision that is taken apart. But let me ask you. you see, see, senior, <laughs> you are, I'm, you are, aside the motive, aside the motive, your personal view on, on the directive, is it is it good? See, if it is going to lead to a situation where there will be proper traffic flow, where there wouldn't be carnage on our roads, where... The proper things will be done. I won't have difficulty with it. But if it's going to lead to a converse situation where, as you're saying, we are going to have many more uh, unqualified drivers to be on our roads to drive when they are not supposed to drive, then that's where we'll have the difficulty. But you see, as I said, they never issued a blanket statement. They are saying that all those processes and procedures, traffic management, will still be part of their processes. And you see, when the police police people are conducting their own, or they, are, they put in place this, uh, operational uh, pro uh, procedures and all those things. They know how to do it. When they brought, when they invented the idea of making the police visible on our streets, we commended them because we trusted in their judgment. Why are we this time <coughs> having a pessimistic view because of politics? <laughs> yeah, oh, tell no. you it's not this time. No, 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 so they don't want to harass drivers and all those things. And I'm saying that if you and I as lawyers, we agree that most of the things they do to our drivers are, are harassment, then we should be applauding the IGP and be petitioning him to do more and to make sure that okay. they ought to it, it have a standard out. procedure to ensure that <laughs> our, just our, our brothers who are drivers are not harassed. Okay, let me bring it. I'll, I'll come to you, uh, lawyer Paul. Let me go back on this one. Kuku, what, what do you stand on this? I mean, in fact, we, we, we learned this week that the police, they're going to probe the leak, where the leak came from, because they, they find that this was a directed <coughs> director that the you know officers on the ground and somehow it's become a public a public. Well, 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 for the police as an institution, they have their rules of engagement, their code of discipline, all those things. I can understand them if they would you want to find out how an internal memo memo leaked. <laughs> to the media or the public that that's okay they are entitled to that but for those of us in the media and in the public space uh, we are okay with the leakage you know yes yeah we are okay with it 
it. And here we are. But you it's never intercepted it. Oh, well, no, not in this case. 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 In this case, I'm a beneficiary of, of the league. <laughs> yes. And, I, and here we are. We are discussing it because it's a matter of public interest yeah. mm. and has all sorts of implications. I have to be honest with you, I don't understand the policy, mm. the rationale. I don't get it. And our last Thursday on Metro TV, Good Morning, and I was asking for further and better particulars to convince me that, look, this is an appropriate decision to take. I don't know if you listen to Sifa, whether he convinced you. He says, No, I wasn't convinced. Mm. I'm, not, I'm still not convinced. Mm. I, I'm, I, I'm wondering, what, what is it that if you don't check the vehicle documentation, in, including licenses and the rest, then it means traffic would flow smoothly? Mm. Uh, is there no correlation between, and here I'm quite uneducated, between those documentations mm. and also road accidents and mm. indiscipline? Yes. Mm. I thought there was. Yes. So I don't understand it. They, they ought to convince us. And how long is this policy going to stick? After the elections. No, they didn't indicate. So? They didn't indicate. <laughs> I, will, I, I, I had to say first that this he, goes, he, says, he says they will have to leave you. But as for now, it's, they don't have a time. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, this whole thing, I'm not convinced at all. Th there's something really strange about it. There's a, a specter is hunting my, my, my brother. The 20, 2008 elections. What happened? <laughs> oh, when they ended up free, you know the way. The drivers, of the, the taxi of drivers, drivers, and all those. And some of them were sent in yeah. Who freed and some them? of them were released. Who freed them? Pardon. Who freed them? Oh, the, pre I, the president granted the pardon. Too. Who told yes. you that? Oh, no. oh, it's, it's, it's part of you the narrative. That's the reason why it's a politics. They have done it before. Phil, let 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 He just said the president granted pardon to them under which section of the constitution? No, I'm told that is he. No, yeah, I'm asking. No, under which section? Because I've heard this whole thing being thrown left, True, right, this and center. This under which section of the constitution the president exercised that power? Is it no, no. It didn't happen. No. You see, let me tell you. It is true that a law that had been repealed it was being used. The Road Traffic uh, Act. Act. Mm. Some sections had been repealed relative to sanctions, particularly. Yeah. And the courts, unaware, of the repeal applied the old laws in mm. sentencing mm. these drivers mm. and it is true that post the first run it became <laughs> an issue it is true <laughs> and i recall that and i have i have the records here because i had had people throwing these things around it is true that the deputy attorney general is, is it we see prempe or is it prempe? yes prempe, yeah. prempe yes. is a friend i'm sorry if i forgot his mm. first name issued a public statement to the effect that they've realized that the courts were applying the wrong law mm. but the people who were became beneficiaries of the dispensation that is a review that was strictly a judicial action mm. the chief justice issued this memo <laughs> is dated 15th december 2008 <laughs> to all supervising high court judges and circuit court judges and ma magistrates is titled Review of Motor Offenses Dealt With by District and Circuit Courts from October 3rd, 2008, when the Road Traffic Amendment Act 2008, Act 761, was passed. This is a memo. Mm. Then, this is a press release from the Judicial Secretary, mm. after which the Chief Justice appointed three judges. They divided the Ghana into sectors, three sectors. Mm who proceeded, they compiled the list of all those victims mm -hmm. who had been jailed by the wrong law. Mm -hmm. And the judicial service itself re amended those things, the sentences, mm -hmm. in line with the new law. So those who had been jailed or had been given f uh, fines that were not in consonance with this law had them returned to them and released so at the end of the day, all the records are here was a purely judicial exercise that got them out. Mm -hmm. Even though I concede the political executive had also mm. come in earlier. But the release itself, That's if you read act. all the documents here, you see it's well documented. But we could, the, the prosecution so, was not that so, let, let, let me finish. So the point that the president exercises <laughs> prerogative of mercy, 
Usually as he do. said, it's not true. If I have time, I will go through this yes, list exactly. and you will see exactly what happened. Okay? In the, 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 the case of the greater Accra region, let me read it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. It says, copies of, this is uh, following the persistent reports that tri courts in the country are not applying the provisions of the Road Traffic Amendment Act 2008, Act 761, which came into force on October 3, 2008, and amended the Road Traffic Act 2004, Act 683. The Chief, Chief Justice, Her Leadership, Mrs. Je Justice Georgina T. Wood, has since December 15, 2008, eight, given the following directives. One, copies of the Road Traffic Amendment Act 2008 have been dispatched to all courts in the country. Mm -hmm. All courts which have handled motor traffic offenses since 2000, October 3, 2008, under the old law, Act 683, have been directed to compile a list of all such cases and submit them to the office of the chief justice and to the supervising <coughs> high court judges in their regions. Mm. Three, her leadership, uh, her leadership, the chief justice, has also directed all the supervising high court judges in their regions, except Greater Accra, to exercise the jurisdiction and powers provided under sections 52 and 53 of the Courts Act 1993, at 459, such that all sentences passed within the period which are at variance with the provisions of the new law at 761 will be varied and or revised. Mm. There's no need to continue, but the yes. same thing. Yeah. Yeah, then. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so back, back to this latest episode. No, then. This one, I'm There's not a suggestion that yeah. it is it's political. I wouldn't want to go in that realm. And <laughs> it is the same. As my brother was doing. <laughs> no, no, I was not no it's the same. Me. I, I was not you see, so I was this matter came up. I was out there in the UK when the Munti three were mm. padded. Yeah. And on social media particularly, NDC communicators went take, uh, dragging out this uh, taxi driver thing and claiming that President before exercised uh, prerogative mm. of mercy in pardoning them, which was wrong. That's how come I compiled this thing and put it somewhere. Mm. And then this morning, I heard the same thing going on. So I, I quickly decided that <laughs> this file must accompany me. <laughs> because I knew, for your life. I knew <laughs> there, was the, for your life. there was the potential <laughs> for this mischief <laughs> to be reported <laughs> here. But you see, and my brother did exactly what I anticipated. No, I never, I never did so. You, see, you were doing it in, in reaction to the uh, attachment. Let me see, be honest. If you notice my approach, I don't like starting poli uh, discussions with pol I politics. I agree. You have not so, so you were you were reacting to attack. I, I, I was telling attack that he, yeah, before no, they have so, done it so before. You were equalizing. No, my before brother. they have done it before, that's how come no, he's suspecting I, I, that I, I, this I, is clearly a political. I'll be fair to you, but you were also wrong. Yes. In substance. I, I concede. But, but I, what I'm saying you is you that it's concede. I concede. But what I'm saying is that you see, there were discussions around. And pro various protests mm. from various transport unions and all the within that time. Oh, but I've said it and in the attorney general, yes. the deputy and attorney general that issued a statement. It is so there was a political because, angle. See, yeah. As lawyers as we are, yeah. it is because a political decision was taken that somebody then had to sit down to find so, ways of well, let me see, ways of remedy it. And that, the chief that, no, no, no. I'm not talking about chief justice. No, I'm saying that see. You said the deputy attorney general issued a statement earlier have, before the chief justice did all this, yeah. took all these steps. And I'm saying that somebody, there were protests all over the place, and the union had threatened that they would be voting against the new patriotic party and all those things. It was these things that triggered somebody to sit down to find ways of remedying it. And lo and behold, they find that there's a loophole. Even the law we are using is wrong. So they ended up relying on it. I'm saying Look that the, the substance. Oh. Let's be so, honest. People let's, were dealt with and they repealed the law. Mm. That self was injustice yes. of the highest order. Yes, we see it. And it was cured we see also it on a daily basis okay. in the court. Okay. I'm saying, okay. Okay. true, I'm saying okay. this is the true, statement. True. True. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all right. Let, 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 let me hear you, Lawyer. Yes, you see, uh, it's something, it's amazing. <laughs> politicians, just permit me, let me He's a politician. Uh, borrow Uncle Kwaku's strategy a bit. There is this article, mm -hmm. and the person can authenticate later. Now start. It says the schemes and maneuvering of MPP politicians don't cease to amaze me. These schemes and maneuverings couldn't have been happening if the Ghanaian politician had respect for the city's union and does not see them as gullible bunch that can be easily manipulated and deceived. The person lists a number of things the MPP were doing in 2007, 2008 before the election. 
Then this is what he said. Now, this is the latest and probably the most fascinating maneuver. In what appears to be a flagrant interference in the work of the judiciary, the information minister, Honorable Asamoah Boati, announced last week on Joy FM mm -hmm. that government had asked the judges to reduce the fines they slap on drivers who appear before them at the motor court. Mm. The lame excuse the minister gave was that drivers were complaining and that this will also curb corruption. Mm. What the minister fails to realize is that his comments justify the corruption in the Ghana police service. The minister also failed to tell Ghanaians that if they treated the Ghana police service about one-tenth of how the, the politicians treat themselves by increasing the salaries of policemen and paying it on time, corruption in Ghana police service will be drastically reduced. Again, the drivers have been complaining since the establishment of the motor court over three years ago. And why were they not listened to? Honorable Okujeto, well, that time Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa is what he wrote this thing. Leading member of CJA. Mm. If he may authenticate, I'm not very sure. Mm. But well, days, so to say sure. that it appears this is the first time that this is happening, <laughs> it's not factual. Of course, around that time, people ascribe political motive to it. So it becomes perfectly right. And interesting, the very people who ascribe the political motive to it are now See. also saying that <laughs> there's no political motive to it. But that we can live with, because I think it's, it's becoming normal these days that if, if it doesn't hit you, then you, must comp I mean, you shouldn't complain. Any so this is where we are. Now, when you look at this whole thing, I, I just don't get it because, number one, um, and I, I must say that the fact that the police are not checking these things also doesn't mean that as citizens we should not comply with law. Because compliance with law is a civic duty mm. in the first place. So you shouldn't say that, well, then I'm not going to buy But if you're not checking, why should I bother? Yes, and that is the problem. You see, one, it is going to affect insurance. True. Yes. It is going to affect the insur in insurance industry. And number two, when people are driving and they think that, well, my license has even expired, <coughs> why should the person go there? And I'm saying that that is not justification. But uh, the fundament, uh, a fundamental function of the police is enforcement and even prevention. We know that there is always a resistance to obedience to law. And that is why we have the police want to prevent the commission of an offense. Because when you leave people, they will not obey the law mm -hmm. naturally. But the, that is why the police presence alone sometimes even deter people from making the attempt to commit an offense in the sure. first place. So it, the idea that if my license is expired, it will not be found, uh, nobody will find out. Or the person who should enforce it will not find out. Will, will just be a way of encouragement to people not to obey the law, which shouldn't be the case, I say. But so if they are suspending or staying this important function of prevention and enforcement in respect of these matters. I think it's a very worrying situation. And one driver I heard this week on one of the stations, he said when it was done in 08, there was a lot of lawlessness on the street. Wow. He, he was saying he's, he's one, one the uh, representative of the, the DPRTU. He said there was a lot of um, lawlessness on the street. And he was even calling on the police. There is a better way to deal with this situation. Of course, we are not talking about the, I mean, corruption or perceived corruption. We are talking about traffic flow. But that should also be part of the system. If we, we need to solve our traffic, traffic situation, it is not, this is not, for me, a prudent solution, uh, solution to it. <laughs> we should look at our road network system, the bus transit that they introduced yeah, recently, which we are and doing. that one also people are saying because the drivers complain, it had to be withdrawn. I don't know, but so when we introduce these things, better railway systems and so on. I mean, if there is a justification, why should people then continue to use their vehicles when they can just jump <laughs> on a very good um, train and then go to their places of work? We can resolve the traffic situation 
otherwise than applying this particular arrangement. And I think that they should reconsider it. Today is in the papers that they have commenced investigation. Yeah. Investigation into what? The they, want, they, want to, they want to probe the leak. Well, it's not about the leak. We, the public, are interested. And in any case, I, mean, I still insist that we already have sufficient legal framework in the Constitution itself True. that entitles us citizens to seek for these things. You see, mm. To seek for what? I mean, information like this. Okay. I mean, you don't really, with all due respect, need... Well, what information? The, 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 on this the, one... The, um, is it the right reasoning, reasoning why why they why they took the decision to suspend? You you think we should we should be told? But they told us that already. Well, what what? I mean, the on the decision to suspend the motor checks. Yes, they told us the reason already. You, well, you but, disagree but, but, with but, the reason. But they, they told us because it had been leaked. True. We wouldn't have known. Okay. And you'll be just driving and no police. Yeah, last night, a number of where I, I I live, you go through a number of checks. They've removed all of them. So, what about if people have some dangerous substances in their vehicles? Now the police will just stand aloof, or even will not be there at all. So they say they check arms for arms and all. No, but the point is that they have even removed. At least I can speak to you. Where no, but well, well, the road I used last night, they were so there was the police barrier, and they, well, it, it wasn't as thorough as it used to mm. be. So the, the guy was holding the touchline as a touch and says. And yeah, well, well, but, but I, think so. also like, I, I think they, think they should fashion. withdraw this memo. They should come mm. out openly to say that they have withdrawn it. <laughs> even if they don't So you want to withdraw? Yes, okay. withdrawn openly. Let me, but even if they will not be checking, in our minds, we should be informed that they are going ahead to would, do what they used to do. Yeah. Because the mind is such that when things like this register in, they then compete with even your your I mean your resolve to comply with no, law. I agree with you. Quick, uh, just before we <laughs> take a break, you, you agree with the withdrawal? It <laughs> says the police should simply rescind this decision. Yeah, because I'm not convinced. Unless they can convince me, I I don't see the rationale. I really don't see it. I think they can continue with the documentation checks as well as do election related security. Yes. That's what it is. Both can be done at the same time. They have the capacity. If they don't have, they can ask other agencies to help. But I'm not convinced at all that it's okay to say that for a while. Of course, we don't know when it will end. Sure. Don't check line, driver's license. Don't check the road wealthy yeah. certificate. Sure. They, I, I'm not too convinced. There's something very problematic with this decision. And I might side with him that it's really needless. Yes, so live on News File here on Joy 99.7 FM, also on your Joy News channel on uh, Multi TV. We take a short break. We'll return. There are other key issues to talk about. We'll talk about politics. The MPP is set to launch their manifesto tomorrow. Of course, we had Hassan Yaga's manifesto launch this week. And the, the, the accusation from the MPP that Hassan Yaga also stole uh, their own ideas. But this week, we've seen uh, a court case in which. Um, you know, the PPP had attempted to, um, you know, cite the EC for contempt because they accepted the, the offer they made, um, you know, paying their registration uh, for the elections, presidential and parliamentary, and that has become controversial, but the court has dismissed it. The substantive case is yet to be had. We'll be discussing that right after the break. <laughs> 